When your family's in need of medical care, where should you turn? Come to Englewood Hospital, home of the most advanced technologies and medical equipment. Home to magnet award-winning nurses who deliver compassionate professional care and home to more top-rated doctors than any other hospital in North Jersey. For your family's health, come to Englewood Hospital. We're closer than you think. Good evening. Welcome to Dr. Gore's show. Um, this is a part two of the previous show that we did on common pain and its causes. We went into detail about history, physical examination, investigations, and why it's so important for one who suffers from pain to write down what makes it worst, uh, what position makes it worst, is it worst in the morning, is it worst in the evening, when they get up, what kind of helps them, and how long it's been going on, and all those things are very important to keep in mind because it helps the physician like Dr. Datta to come to a, a diagnosis, what might be the cause of this. Uh, we briefly went through in the last show, which you can always view on YouTube if you haven't seen the show, um, about the mechanism of pain starting from spine to the ligament to the nerves to the disc, muscles, why it's so important to find out the cause because the treatment is geared towards that. And to talk about treatment, uh, we have Dr. Datta back. Um, Dr. Datta, as we discussed, is, is trained in India, London, and USA, and he was awarded for his work as, Bar um, as Bharat Ratna this, in Ratnam um, this year. And it's, it's such a pleasure to have you back and to talk about management of this back pain. Thank you for having me again, Dr. Gore. It really was a pleasure to do the first section of mm -hmm. the talk. And now I think we should look into the management options for pain. All right. Now, like I said before, I like to do things simple. Mm -hmm. And in the simple process, what we refer to as the conservative measures, mm -hmm. the first options that we would always try are things like physical therapy, okay. posture, mm -hmm. and weight management. Correct. The reason that I think that these are so important is because there is a part that, we ha that a patient needs to understand that they can perform, mm -hmm. and there's a part that I can perform. Correct. Now, in the physical therapy, posture, weight, and exercise are parts that the patient will do for themselves. Correct. And the reason that this is so important is it's like playing cards. Now, when a patient has come to me and has said that I have a disc herniation and it's mm -hmm. causing sciatica-like pain mm -hmm. or has disc disease and is causing facet hypertrophy and spondylosis, they have actually shown me their cards that they have a problem in their back. Correct. And like we mentioned previously, most people don't even know they have a problem. Mm -hmm. When you have shown me that you have these problems over there, for me, it is important that the patient knows that the contribution that they will make towards their well-being right. is the most important contribution that they can do. Correct. And that is why the whole concept of physical therapy, posture, weight management, and exercise is what they can do for themselves to help them feel better. So when they're 65 and they're running after their grandchildren, it is not from what I do, mm -hmm. but it is from what they do is what will make them feel better. Correct. So they become the primary center of the treatment. They are guiding their own selves. Correct. And if patients come to understand that this is important, Correct. my life becomes a lot easier. Right. Because now they will be motivated to feel better. And as they see that things are getting better, then my need to do any further interventions become less and less. And I tell all my patients, I said, the less you see of me, the better I'm doing my job. Mm -hmm. I really don't need to see them. If they're doing well, they can stay away from me. I have no problems at all. But if all these conservative measures don't fail, don't work, and they fail, then we go to the next medic next okay. process. And the mm -hmm. next process is to try and do things like medications. Okay. Now, there is a vast variety of medications available. In the United States right now, there is an increasing problem of abuse of medications. So one has to be extremely, the narcotics. extremely careful. So before you go down the road of having to start giving them pain medications like the Percocet, like everybody hears about, mm -hmm. the opioids like we talked about. Or the about, Vicodin. Vicodin, which is a really, really abused drug. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful that you don't go down that road. Correct. So don't go to your physician and ask them to give me the Percocet because you have to be cautious. You might think that it's not a problem, but it may not be a problem for you, but it may be a problem for somebody else in your family. 
and because the family member abuse of prescription pain medication is the biggest problem in the United States, mm -hmm. you as the patient should be aware that if you're going to be getting all these medications, you'll be extremely careful how you use them, how you store them. And how you safely store it. Very important. I tell my patients to have a safe. Count and keep a count of how many pills were there. Very important because you might have somebody who comes to your house, goes into your bathroom, mm -hmm. and the next thing you know is they walked away with your medications. This is really a big problem. So just be careful. Sure. So there is a vast medication range mm -hmm. from non-steroidal anti-inflammatories to muscle relaxants to simple pain medications mm -hmm. and further and further on. In my practice, like I had mentioned to you previously, that I see people who have had chronic pain for a long time, mm -hmm. we have a vast majority, vast range of medications that we can use mm -hmm. and I'm extremely cautious about how I use Correct. them. But unfortunately or fortunately, whatever, patients come to me by the time they have already been to other physicians right. and so I am now going down the road of more complicated options. Correct. So the complicated options if the medications don't work or have been working for some time and we don't wish to pursue any more aggressive medication management is interventions. Okay. In intervention pain management has become by itself a very, very specialized uh, subspeciality within pain management. Right. And there are a lot of physicians who wish only to do interventions. Okay. Now, I as an individual do the entire range of doing mm -hmm. You know, pain medication management and intervention procedures and I feel thing. comfortable about that Correct. process but there are some who don't. So when let's talk about some simple things as far as sure. interventions go. Now when we talk in terms of simple interventions you would have heard of an epidural. Right. Now, you're an obstetrician and mm -hmm. you would have told your women that when they're in labor they're going to have an epidural. Correct. The difference between that epidural that is being given to somebody who is in labor to what they're coming to me for is an epidural is that person is going to have the epidural for the acute pain mm -hmm. that is coming with labor. Right. I, on the other hand, will be doing an epidural for, chronic. for a chronic pain process that is not related to labor. And it's a long-term. And hopefully it will be a long-term process. Correct. So let me show you how this is done over here. Sure. Now, this, if you see over here, mm -hmm. is a little model of the spine like I showed you over there. And if you look inside over here, the, the middle over here is what we call as the epidural space. Correct. This thing in over here is referred to as the epidural space. Mm -hmm. So when we do an epidural, we put a needle in the middle over here, right. and that you will see on the slide that I mentioned mm -hmm. about. And this is how the needle is placed. You, you can see that. Mm -hmm. And that slide will show you both an anterior view mm -hmm. and a lateral view where the needle goes in. Correct. Now, once the needle is confirmed that the position is, is in the right place, mm -hmm. a common medication that is a, put into that space is a bit of cortisone, Correct. steroids or cortisone. Mm -hmm. The primary purpose of the cortisone is to act as an anti-inflammatory. Reduce them. So it reduces the inflammation mm -hmm. that is, from whatever reason, could be causing the irritation to the nerves, which is the reason why you have pain. Mm -hmm. If there is a disc that is herniated out over there and it's irritating the nerves, the steroids will reduce the inflammation. So you're kind of targeting the therapy to the area where it Correct. needs to be rather than take oral steroids for long term. Absolutely. You're giving it to the area where the inflammation needs to be reduced. That is right. And this allows, this comes back to this, the, 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 the initial construct mm -hmm. was that you take a good history and do a physical exam, Correct. then you know where you want to where do Where your you focal want. point for the pain is. Correct. Now, for people who have a lot of pain that is there across the back, mm -hmm. we talked in terms of spondylosis. Mm -hmm. Now, that was the the facet joint, joint. Uh -huh. and this is where you get the disease over there. Correct. So what we are able to do is called a median branch block. Mm -hmm. And a median branch block is where you put a needle, there are these two nerves. There is a big nerve that goes and becomes like the sciatic nerve over there. Uh -huh. And the small nerve over here comes to the joint around this area. Right. So we can put a needle right in over here under x-ray, uh -huh. and we can block the small nerve and not block the big sciatic nerve. Right, so they can function. Correct, and this will give me a good process to find out, is the pain coming from this joint? Right. Or is it the sciatic nerve? Correct. If the patient tells me immediately after doing this injection mm -hmm. that the pain is now getting better, mm -hmm. then what I'm able to do is to say, I can offer you something more long-term. In the long-term option, mm -hmm. we have this special device, it's called radio frequency. Correct. So what we do with this radio frequency is that we, this is a, this is a very special needle. Okay. Let me show you the needle. It is insulated mm -hmm. and only part of it is exposed. Correct. This, mach this gets then attached to a machine. Uh -huh. That will then generate heat in the tip of this needle. Okay. So this needle is then specifically placed right in that area where we had earlier tested 
to uh -huh. make sure that the pain is coming from there. We place this needle in that area over there, mm -hmm. and then we can generate heat in this needle tip. This will then hopefully cauterize this nerve. Okay. And this will give me relief of pain for about six months at a time. Oh. And gives the patient a huge amount of improvement in quality of life. Right. Like we mentioned that spondylosis can pe have caused people to have difficulty with turning. Sure. This is huge because now suddenly the person is able to get in and out of the car right. well. He's getting out of the chair well. Right. He's able to go there and dance a little bit and not feel like he's going to have a back problem. Correct. So, now, uh, now, is this procedure office-based, correct? The patient comes and does the procedure and goes home the same day? Correct. It's an outpatient procedure, Correct. but it has to be done under x-ray. Okay. And the reason for doing it under x-ray is to make sure that Location this needle of the tip. is positioned correct. Ap absolutely appropriately. Because if you have the needle in the wrong place, it you can, can be cause disaster. problems. Yes. Right. And that is the reason before anything is done, we test the system. Correct. And we test the system in a, in a set protocol, sure. which allows to say, hey, listen, this is correct or mm -hmm. not right. right. Because I don't want to cauterize the wrong nerve. And if I cauterize the sciatic nerve, I have a big problem. More than me, the patient has a big problem. Of course. And I don't want that. Right. And for me, the basic thing is that if I can't do any good, don't do any don't harm. Don't do harm. Mm -hmm. Now, that is what we can do for the both for the neck okay. and in the back. Now, something else we can do also. Okay. If patients have pain that is radiating like a sciatica-like pain, mm -hmm. what we are able to do with this over here is you see that there's a hole coming out over here. This hole is where the nerve is coming out from. You right. see this nerve coming uh -huh. out over there? Under x-ray, we can put a needle right in that area. Okay. And if there is a disc that is irritating that nerve, we can put the cortisone specifically for that one nerve so that the pain that is the sciatica-like pain or it's if in the shoulder going down in the arm, sure. we can target that level and give a little bit of cortisone. This is an epidural injection also, uh -huh. but it comes from the side. Right. And this is very specific to that one nerve that may be the problem that you have. It again gives a good response because we are targeting the steroids just to exactly. that one nerve. There's a large concentration of steroids. It's not likely to cause as many side effects as taking oral medication. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Especially all this is common in older patients who is. might have blood pressure and diabetes, which can get worse when they take systemic steroids. So this is a great targeted therapy without having systemic side effects. Fewer side effects. I'm not going to right. say that doesn't have it because every now and then a patient It might get say, absorbed. Correct. Patients will come and tell me their blood sugar, sugar goes up. up. Right. And I tell them that it's likely to happen for a couple of days, but hopefully it will get better. Correct. They might suddenly feel flushed. Right. You know, and they say, wow, my red face is feeling really flushed. And it's, it's an effect that steroids do have. Sure. Now, as we were talking about the neck in the back, there's mm -hmm. another part that we talk about. Now, that was the, that was the neck over there that we talked mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. And then as we go down, we have the thoracic spine over there. Right. Now, in the thoracic spine, you can get a lot of chest pain. Hmm. Now, we can do similar ep epidural injections like we talked about in mm -hmm. the area and try and block the nerves over there. Mm -hmm. And you can see that on the slide on the intercostal nerve blocks over there. Okay. And this can be done very well. Just as a little digression for sometimes when patients have, I'm just taking care of this young lady, mm -hmm. she's only 79, she's not mm -hmm. very old, and she has cancer of the lung that has now grown into this area. Wow. So what I have done is I have put some needles into that area mm -hmm. and I have injected alcohol. So this has now burned the nerves off completely. So she has no pain in that area. So even though her cancer might not be treatable, you're making Can, her life easier. That is correct. And this is why the targeted process of having mm -hmm. to first do an exam and then decide where the pain processes are Correct. allows for me to target the treatment. And I can put the alcohol into that area quite safely mm -hmm. because I know I'm not going to be causing any problems anywhere else. Sure. And this lady has done really well. She has other pain problems that we have to address, mm -hmm. but this has been taken care of. Correct. I think it's amazing how the technology helps us treat our people and all these uh, instruments and radio frequency um, has made our uh, treatment, so targeted treatment Correct. to help our patients. Now, in the previous uh, interview when we were mm -hmm. discussing this, we had said that one of the things that happens with the back mm -hmm. is that people have sciatic joint pain. Correct. Now, the sciatic joint, like I said, meant, uh, uh, it amounts to about 25% of the pain problems in the lower back. Wow. People miss this. Mm -hmm. So when you examine the patient and you feel that the pain is having is in the sciatic area, mm -hmm. if a physical examination will show you that it's not in the area of the waist, mm -hmm. but below the area of the waist, right. and not in the middle where the tailbone is, but sure, on the side. Sides, right. That is what you would have. 
commonly seen among people who are dancers mm -hmm. and because of the way that they maintain their posture. Mm -hmm. Now, this happens in elderly people too. Mm -hmm. And what we are able to do is we are able to place a needle okay. and block the, the nerves that comes to the sciatic joint. Okay. And if that is successful, there is this new device that has come through which is quite incredible. Okay. This is called a Simplicity Probe. Okay. And the Simplicity Probe, if you look at it carefully, has an entire area which is allowed for doing the radio frequency or cauterizing the nerve. Wow. So this is a whole area and it causes what we refer to as a strip lesion. Okay. Now this sciatic nerve, mm -hmm. the, the thing, the way it's placed is the needle is placed in between the joint and the nerve over here. Mm -hmm. And by having to do that, what you're able to do is burn all the nerves mm -hmm. that are going into the sciatic joint. Okay. And this is a very simple procedure, mm -hmm. very safe. And the results have been very, very encouraging. Wow. Very, very encouraging. So, if you come to the doctor and the doctor says that you've got a sciatic joint problem coming in over there right. and he offers you the radio frequency using the Simplicity Pro, mm -hmm. it should be in your mind saying, hey, listen, this is not a dangerous process. It's quite safe, highly effective. Mm -hmm. And you should, as an individual, say, okay, let me go ahead with that. Right. Not to be worried about. Right. So, that's about as far as some of the simple procedures that we do. Now, it makes so much sense when, when you're explaining it to give therapy where there is cause and the root of pain and to treat it either with medication, uh, which is going to have reduce the inflammation or burn it with alcohol. Um, we're going to take a short break and we're going to continue this informative talk about how we manage pain. We'll be right back. When your family's in need of medical care, where should you turn? Come to Englewood Hospital home of the most advanced technologies and medical equipment. Home to magnet award-winning nurses who deliver compassionate professional care. And home to more top-rated doctors than any other hospital in North Jersey. For your family's health, come to Englewood Hospital. We're closer than you think. Welcome back to Dr. Go's show. So we are talking about common pain and how do we manage it? And we have a lot of new advances in the technology, how we manage back pains. And to talk about that, we have Dr. Datta. And we started with targeted therapy about giving injections, epidural, radio frequency. And it, it's all amazing, Dr. Datta. I think when I'm hearing you explain, it makes so much sense why you, know, you treat the way you treat it. So going back to radio frequency, you said you have identified the nerve. Correct. So what I wish to kind of show you is mm -hmm. that uh, I'm going to use the same needle. Sure. But when we talked about doing the radio frequency, mm -hmm. the nerve that we're looking to target is that little small nerve that is coming on over there. Mm -hmm. Now this sm small nerve actually goes around this joint. Right. Now when we do the radio frequency, mm -hmm. what we're able to provide is we can cauterize this nerve or lesion sure. the nerve uh -huh. and we can do multiple levels. In the same setting? In the same setting. Okay. And the way we work it out is that this little this little needle, like I said, is, is mm -hmm. insulated. Mm -hmm. It gets attached to a little machine. Right. And you see that machine over there? That's mm -hmm. the neurotherm machine. Mm -hmm. That generates the heat okay. by radio frequency. Mm -hmm. Now, we are able to set the parameters by mm -hmm. which we want to do the cauterization. The parameters for the neck are a little less because mm -hmm. we don't want it too hot in the neck over there. Correct. But the way we work it out is that after you've got this positioning in the needle properly, mm -hmm. we will then test the system. Sure. And in the testing system, it is again to tell the patient, am I putting my needle in the right place? Correct. If the patient says, that's the pain that bothers me, I know my needle's in the right place. Right. But I, again, I want to test to make sure that I'm not getting the wrong nerves. Correct. And that is part of the testing process. When we get that test right, mm -hmm. we will then numb the nerve that we're looking to cauterize. Sure. And then that neurotherm machine, like I'm showing you over here mm -hmm. right now, will then set the parameters to whatever we want to Correct. for the duration. And the way I work it out is that I will do it three times mm -hmm. to try and make sure that I've done it enough mm -hmm. so the patient doesn't have to come back to see me. Correct. And like I said before, the less the patient sees of me, the better I am. Sure. You know, so it's good for the patient. He doesn't have to see the doctor too often. Sure. And they get a really good result. Right. Sometimes, mm -hmm. if you have a lot of arthritic changes in mm -hmm. the elderly mm -hmm. people, it can be difficult, mm -hmm. but it's well worth the try to kind of do something Correct. like that because these things can be so, they are so non-invasive mm -hmm. in that the, the only thing that a patient will go home with is a little band-aid on their skin. Sure. But if it can give them good results, 
their life they, is going to change. Their life is going to change. Correct. And you know, the smile that I get to see on a patient's face when they come back mm -hmm. after I've done a procedure is worth every little bit of difficulty that I have Correct. when I'm trying to do the procedure. It's okay. really worth the, you know, right. worth the every effort. Absolutely. So. And what about the, the simplicity probe that now you were we, showing us? Correct. Now we talked about the simplicity probe mm -hmm. and the simplicity probe, like I said, is placed in that area mm -hmm. that goes right between the sacroiliac joint and mm -hmm. the nerves that come into the sacroiliac foramen. Correct. Now, as I said, there's a big, there's a big area for cauterization. Correct. And what, the reason this probe became so good mm -hmm. was that we were able to identify from recent developments in anatomy mm -hmm. how the innovation to the sacroiliac joint is taking place. Correct. By having to do that, they were able to design a probe that would meet the needs of the no. innovation to the sacroiliac joint, and that was a really smart move. Mm -hmm. So in the old days when we tried to do the sacroiliac joint innovation, mm -hmm. denovation or mm -hmm. the, the cauterization, it used to be a messy process. Now. This is a one-stop shop. It goes in over there, and we have this little thing over here in the back, mm -hmm. which connects the probe to mm -hmm. the neurotherm machine that we talked Correct. about, and I can show you that. Mm -hmm. And this, again, you set the parameters the way you want to. You do it. You get the nerve out, the, the needle out, and the patient, patient goes home with one little bandaid, and his, you know, the pain in his buttock over there is improved significantly. They're able to move around a lot better. Mm -hmm. They can then reduce the amounts of pain medications they're taking, Correct. and that makes a big difference. Absolutely. So. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. in however which way I can reduce the amount of pain and then reduce the amount of pain medications, I will improve the patient's quality of life. Correct. Absolutely. And now we, we briefly, um, I, I really want to talk about the stenosis, the spinal Correct. stenosis. As you mentioned, as we get older, it's a very common problem. Can you briefly touch upon? Uh, sure. Spinal stenosis is actually a problem and, you know, it's unfortunate I actually happen to do a case on a 25 year old girl with spinal stenosis, wow. which is unusual. I haven't done one before, but I did one just two, two weeks ago. But it usually happens as you grow the, in the 60 plus people over there. Mm -hmm. And what they will tell you is mm -hmm. that their quality of life has deteriorated because they're not able to walk. Mm -hmm. Something that they love to do so much, now they could walk earlier two miles without a problem. Now they walk, you know, half a block or one block and they start feeling tired. Mm -hmm. They need to sit down. They're in the mall, they're sitting down after a few minutes and they get up and they get they walk Better. around. Mm -hmm. This is a classical process of presentation for spinal stenosis. Mm -hmm. So if you know this mm -hmm. and you see any of your family members who are walking around and say, I need to sit mm -hmm. because I'm feeling tired, you start thinking, does this person have spinal stenosis? Correct. And now what happens with spinal stenosis is a very common and a very simple way of presenting to you uh -huh. is that if this is an image of the spine, mm -hmm. all right, if this is an image of the spine, you can see that over there. Mm -hmm. Now you see this here. This is a normal spine image. You right. can see that the channel over here is nice and fairly well open Correct. over here. Right. And you can see that little red line over here. Uh -huh. This is the part of the arthritis that is coming through, which mm -hmm. is normal. As the person gets, starts to get spinal stenosis over here, mm -hmm. you can see that, am I getting that reflection right over there? Mm -hmm. As you get the spinal stenosis, this arthritis has become much more. Right. And when this has become much more, this spinal nerve gets, yeah, right. it gets very much more squished. And this is where if you think the in terms narrowness. of a drain, right. you know, a little drain in your, in your sink, mm -hmm. that you don't know it's blocked till you put the water in there. So somebody who's sitting mm -hmm. doesn't know he has spinal stenosis till he starts to walk. And then all those problems start to happen. Correct. So what we are able to do now, there is mm -hmm. a new device. And this is an absolutely brand new, brand new technology that has come through, mm -hmm. which allows us to be able to decompress this mm -hmm. as an outpatient procedure. Mm -hmm. So let me just show you what we are able to do. Okay. And... Uh, what you're essentially able to do is this, as this is how the spinal stenosis looks over here. Okay. And you can see the spinal stenosis, yeah, that spinal stenosis you see, it is completely blocked. Mm -hmm. And that is the spinal canal going Correct. up and down, mm -hmm. and this is blocked. So what we're able to do is to bring in a little device mm -hmm. like that over here. Mm -hmm. And this device then is able to remove some of the bone tissue from here. Okay. And is able to remove some of the tissue from here. Okay. And then as we are able to do that, which takes us a few minutes to do, sure. this canal will open up. Okay. And this is like doing a rotor rotor job right. and you open the canal and suddenly the patient's spinal canal is open Op and they are able the to move around. The pressure is gone. The right. pressure is gone. The blood starts to flow better. Mm -hmm. The spinal fluid that is within the spinal canal is flowing better. Right. And the patient is able to now walk longer distances, which is what was good handy device for us to be able to try and help pe people who have spinal stenosis. And it has been amazingly successful. 
So this is something that if you have elderly uh, family members who may have spinal stenosis as, as, a, as a problem, right. to keep in mind, and say, hey, listen, let me think about that. Correct. It's, it's always better to rule that out because the treatment um, is is pretty safe. It, as it's you mentioned, it's an outpatient procedure Correct. and it's going to change their life. It is safe. And it is safe because if you know what you're doing, mm -hmm. there are boundaries beyond which you will not take your devices. Correct. And if you can stay within those boundaries and not go beyond, the likelihood of having a problem is, is absolutely minimal. Wow. Right. Now, there's just one more point that I would like sure. to bring about, and that is the process of doing more of the minimally invasive surgery. All that we talked about is actually minimally invasive surgery. Right. The fact that minimally invasive surgery is taken mm. on such a big low mm -hmm. a role, I just want to bring about this thing about having to do spinal decompression for uh -huh. the discs. Correct. <laughs> Excuse me. When we have disc herniations, mm -hmm. The natural process or the natural history of a disc mm -hmm. is it for it to absorb, mm -hmm. to dry and shrink. Okay. So like I said previously, most people who have a disc herniation do not have any no. symptoms. Right. It's only the people who have a disc herniation have symptoms are likely to come to me or to anybody in pain management. Mm -hmm. And that's an option that you would look at. Correct. So what we are able to do uh -huh. by a device which is you're able to put the needle into the you're able to put the needle into the disc here. Okay. And you are able to then, that's the, that's the, disc, the image that you see on the x-ray. Mm -hmm. You're able to put the needle into the disc there. Mm -hmm. And you're able to deploy okay. this device. It's called a spine view device. Uh -huh. And by having to spin that uh, little device inside the disc, you can then suck out part of the disc tissue. Mm -hmm. And the principle behind this is that when you're able to suck out some of the disc tissue, mm -hmm. It decreases the pressure within the disc. Okay. So when it decreases the pressure within the disc, what it has essentially done is it has taken away the pressure on the nerve. Nerves, right. And by having to do that, you're taking away that pressure that you have on the sciatic nerve. Right. And patients can go home. Now, the results if you've got sciatica-like pain for sure. a device like this is far better mm -hmm. than if you have back pain for which you're trying to do something like this Correct. and that's the same with any kind of major surgery so again if you think you have a disc herniation mm -hmm. and you really don't want to go in for back surgery this is an option that you want to really consider and say hey can i consider something that is minimally invasive where i can get my disc surgery done mm -hmm. without having to go for major big big surgeries right. and you know major surgery may be necessary for you right. but at least worth a try but it's worth the try Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on, on Dr. Gore's show. And I think we had a very, very great presentation in the last show as well as this show about back pain and, you know, how we should get the history, investigation and the management. It's, it's nothing uh, that one can't um, try because sometimes if you need something, it can be done minimally. And if it doesn't work, maybe then you might have to go. But just trying the injections, the steroids, um, radio frequency and the newer uh, system that uh, Dr. Datta has talked about is is really uh, an eye-opener for most of us who suffer from pain. Um, I hope you've learned something today and hopefully um, either you or your relative is going to benefit from this talk and you can always view this talk again on YouTube uh, on Dr. Gore's show and um, have a safe um, month and see you next month. Good night. When your family's in need of medical care, where should you turn? Come to Englewood Hospital, home of the most advanced technologies and medical equipment. Home to magnet award-winning nurses who deliver compassionate professional care. And home to more top-rated doctors than any other hospital in North Jersey. For your family's health, come to Englewood Hospital. We're closer than you think.